Hi friends, welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to see how you can configure a static DNS entry on a 40 gate firewall. And uh, right now I'm working on the firmware version 641, but then you can do this on the version below this particular version. So let's get started. Click on DNS under network, DNS server under network. And then um, since I want my port one to, you know, respond for any DNS query coming in. So I will have to first enable port one here and I want the recursive DNS query. So the the query comes in from the client to the port one and then the port one will do the recursive uh, query to the name servers and the firewall is using this particular dns ip so it is going to do the recursive query upstream which means it will query the name server upstreams once and it will get the answer and then it will relay the answer to the client that actually initiated the query. So as you can see here, I have enabled my port one for any kind of query. So I already have an existing DNS entry. So you can see here the zone that I've given here is my name and the so domain name I have given here is summit.com and I have two entries here. Uh, the first entry is SRX, which completes the FQDN as srx.summit.com. And I'm statically resolving this particular domain to 192.168.0.184. The same way I have one more entry here which is 40, 40.summit.com results to 192.168.0.108. So any query coming to the firewall on interface port one or port two for these two particular entries will then be resolved to the respective static IPs. So to test that, let's try to, you know, Check that on our window machine. So the window machine is using a dot a dot a dot eight as the TNS server. So what I'm going to do here is so I'm going to append the preferred DNS server IP here which in my case is so it should literally result to the same IP you can see here srx.summit.com resolving to 192.168.0.184 which is this IP in the same way So you can see here it is resolving to 108 and to confirm that what I can do here is I can take a capture on that particular port so Okay.
So you can see here the traffic. In order to confirm that, I can take a capture as well to confirm that the query is coming to this particular firewall and then there is a proper resolution of that particular query. So I'm going to take a capture on my port one for So I guess we have enough data in our PCAP. So let's try to analyze that. So you can see here the query from my machine, which is 156. Coming to the DNS server IP, which is the port one IP, 192.168.0.108. And this is a type A record, type A record. Whereas in the name is srx.summit.com, IPv4. Question flag enabled. And you can see here, do query recursively. Uh, most of the time from the client to the DNS server, you will have a recursive query. And from the DNS server upstream, you will have iterative. So you can see here the answer. And it is resolving to 192.168.0.184. Okay, it is doing IPv6 as well. This is the name server, ns1.summit.com. One more thing what you can see here is um, that in the response, you can see here that the response is marked as authoritative, which means uh, the firewall is responsible authority for the resolution of this particular query, the domain name to IP. You can see here the flag is set to one. 
So basically, if someone else is resolving the query on behalf of someone else, then you will see a non-authoritative answer. Let's try to do NSLOOKUP for So this is what I was talking about. So you can see here a non-authoritative answer, which means someone else is uh, resolving the facebook.com query. If the name server assigned for facebook.com is resolving the query, then you will not see a non-authoritative answer here, which in my case, um, srx.summit.com is supposed to be resolved by ns1.summit.com. Hence, you don't see that uh, here. So you can see here the names of ns1.summit.com is responsible for the query resolution. Hence, you don't see that particular non-authoritative information. So this is the authority, ns1.summit.com, and the information you can see it here, that the start of authority is ns1.summit.com, and the responsible authority's email is this. I can go ahead and I can change that as well. So the next time when you do the capture, you will see mail.summit.com in the responsible authorities uh, mailbox. And yeah, well, that is all in this video. Um, please do subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, do leave them in the comment section. I will answer them for sure. And stay safe. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Okay, before I close the session, you can see the capture here. The information about the start of authority, start of a zone of authority. And it is ns1.summit.com. And the mail box you can see here, mail.summit.com. All right, guys. Uh, see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.